This is the Main Attraction Podcast. Now here are your hosts, Justin Strawn and Ryan Nelson. Welcome to the Main Attraction Podcast, where we discuss the biggest television shows and movies in the entertainment industry. I am your host, Justin Strawn. Joining me each week is the other host of the show, the man with the electric personality, Ryan Nelson. Justin, I thought about you and all the high school teachers out there who would have to be frightened as hell of a bunch of teenage girls <laughs> with electric powers. That is the most terrifying thing about this entire show. I will not, yeah. I will not, I will not deny that at all. So, uh, if you've been listening to the podcast since we started the podcast last year, thank you for continuing to listen and making us a part of your day. If you're new to the show, we hope you enjoy it as we talk about the first three episodes of The Power on Amazon Prime. If you are new or a regular and would like more access to the show visit our patreon page and become a patron of the main attraction podcast go to patreon.com slash the main attraction podcast you can get patreon only content you can support us at a three five ten or twenty dollar level when you join up we'll shout you out here on the show if you want ad free access to the podcast any level of being a Patreon supporter will get you the show ad-free. It doesn't matter if you're going in as, as low as the $3 level or as high as the $20 level. We will you That will get you the show ad-free on the Patreon app. All you have to do is sign up over on Patreon. If you can't be a patron, though, you can help the show out by rating us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. You can leave us a five-star rating, and if you have time, write us a review on Apple Podcasts. If you would like to interact with the show, send us an email to mainattractionpod at gmail.com. And really quick, I mentioned this in our previous episode on Ted Lasso. We we would really, really, really like it if you could, could if, especially if you're listening to us on Apple, which most people do. But if you're listening on Apple, just scroll down on your Apple player. And if you haven't clicked the five stars, you don't even have to do a, a review. If you can just go down and click the five stars, that would help us out a lot. We're trying to get to be certified on Rotten Tomatoes by the time that we get to our two-year anniversary. And because one of the ways, one of the requirements is you have to have a, you have to be uh, reviewing for two years. But you also have to have a uh, 200 r- ratings on Apple, and they have to be at least a four-star average. So. Uh, like I said, if you could just do us a favor, scroll down if you haven't done it already, click the little five stars, and that would do us a huge favor, and we would really, really appreciate it. All right, so we are discussing the power this week. Here's the thing with this: uh, we were given uh, we were given access to screeners for this for this show. It's the first time we've ever thank been given. Thank you, Amazon. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Amazon. We appreciate it. Uh, so we we just decided, you know what? We'll we'll see what we'll go ahead and uh, review these first three episodes since uh, the first three released on. Uh, on Friday, uh, we got the chance to to view them ahead of time, but we thought we'd at least go ahead and take a you know just kind of see what the audience reception is for this for this particular show. Uh, I will say it's it's an interesting show. I'll, I'll I'm going to go ahead and start there, but I'm going to let you start with your overall impressions of these first three episodes. Well, let me first say my wife Kim, uh, who I've mentioned my, many times on the show, is a avid reader and also in a member of the Book of the Club month, okay. long time member. And every once in a while, she'll get a book and she she'll tell me, "Hey, this is going to be a movie or a series." Most of the time, she says series. Mm-hmm. Now. She has a unbelievable hit record on what <laughs> on hit rate because it's like been Ready Player One, Big Little right. Lies, Station Eleven. <laughs> This was one of them. She's like, hey, this is going to be a series one day. Uh, so I want to shout her out for that. But um, I think this show's trying to do a lot. Yeah, I did. And I don't know if they're going to be able to pull it off. Um, I will say the the trailer to what's to come interests me more than anything I've watched lately. I was like, okay, this kind of looks good. Yeah. But I will give them credit. They're talking about a lot as well, but it's not that preachy, and I don't know how it isn't because they're talking about some serious subjects. Although at one point, I did turn to my wife who had read this book and said, please God tell me this isn't where it's about climate change. Because <laughs> <laughs> so when they're talking least... about, so far, so she far. said the book was not. She okay. said the book was not, but she said, I don't know what they're going to do here because like, and I'm not saying I'm against climate change, I was like, my God, we have enough of these shows and movies out here. I don't need to watch another one. But I was like, don't tell me, you know, the, the ending is like, and we didn't take care of the world. Right. You know? But uh, I will say the acting is very good. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, Tony Collette 
and John Leguizamo are incredible. Our guy, Tahib Jamo from Ted Lasso, one of the most charismatic people. When that guy smiles, oh, yeah. he, likes talk about, he, he could stop climate control. <laughs> <laughs> climate yeah. I, mean, I, can't, I was thinking, like, when he gets burned, I'm like, dude, you've been burned many times with the charisma you have just pouring out of you. Right. Uh, what an incredible guy. I was really impressed with Hallie Bush's Allie. This is her first acting job. Yeah, she was really good. She was incredible. Oh, yeah, she was really I good. Do, uh, Eddie Marzon as Bernie Monk, one of the greatest mob names I've heard oh, in yeah. a while. <laughs> Eddie Marzon has this, he has that Joe Pesci, uh, Christoph Waltz, where he's not a big guy, but my God, is he intimidating. Yeah, he is. But he's just like, he's scary. So I thought he was really good. I really liked uh, Adina Porter, who we saw in Paper Girls. Right. She is so good as a narrator. I'm like, can you narrate my life? I just love you talking. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, think, I think they're doing a lot. I like the acting, but it's very slow. Yeah, and that's, that's the biggest issue that this show has, is the fact that it's very slow. And I, look, this show gets a lot of bonus points for me because when I've read the premise where the premise is uh, teenage girls uh, start uh, having electric electricity like shoot out from their fingers and all this type of stuff, I was like, okay, we're getting a superhero story. That's what we're getting. Yeah. And it's really not a superhero story. Uh, yeah. It's nothing like a superhero story. It's very much an introspective show. Uh, well, I, let's, let's stop that. We don't know that well, though, because we right now it's not because I could see we could see some heroes of these right. girls and some villains. Oh yeah, we could. I think that's where we're going to lead to. I think they will. I think they'll lead to that eventually. But I, I will say this: the where I see it right now is the closest thing in terms of superhero type of stuff that I see it. Because I, like I said, I thought it was going to be like an action show, and it's it's not an action show. I mean, there's a there's a yeah. little bit of that type of stuff that goes yeah. on, but there's not a lot of that at least so far in these first three episodes. The, what I what I thought what I see though is I see a lot of parallels to the X Men. Uh, there's a lot of parallels to X Men. Yeah. I don't know how. Well, few... I, I, did you watch Heroes? Yeah, I did. Mm. I saw that comparison a couple times. As yeah, well. I can see that as well. There, there's a, there's a, definitely some Heroes comparisons there as well. But the reason I went with X Men is because. What made the X Men so unique as a story is when, when the when people start becoming mutants and start getting their powers, they don't it's they don't become instantly love like we often think of with superheroes. Right. They become very people become afraid of them, become terrified of them because they don't know what to do with them. They don't understand them, and that's a, there's a lot of that in this, especially in that episode. I guess it was the second episode where they've got the girls in. Like at the high school, and they're in. Or maybe that was that was the third, third episode. episode. Yeah, it was that was the third episode. It's towards the end of the third. Where they're in that. That was that was frightening. That was terrifying because, like I said, uh, I can't imagine how livid. I don't care how dangerous you think my daughter or my son is. How livid I would be if I walked into my school, my my right. kid's school, and saw them, you know, in this like prison cell thing with Chamber. their yeah with their hands restrained with rubber gloves on them i mean it I, felt like what they do to magneto yeah it, 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 it felt very much like that what they do to magneto so like i said i do get a lot of x-men vibes with with mm -hmm. this particular show uh but like you were saying earlier it is a little bit of it has pacing issues it is slow and that's kind of where it's really kind of drags down uh mm -hmm. I, I i like it overall i think yeah. uh, i think i like it yeah. overall but it does need to, it's just that these episodes these every episode is nearly an hour long uh yeah and they feel it and also i would say not having tony collette in your first episode is a, what mistake. a mistake that yeah. was the only time we see her is basically like this little montage that we get at the very beginning right. that is basically showing us that's like apparently like six months in the future and she's a lot of all this stuff has happened we're kind of getting these little glimpses real quick and then we go six months in the past and we start learning about all these girls and all the stuff they're going with yeah like why wouldn't you start off with her or uh tahib jamo as tundi to start off because they're known you know yeah, like you that, that would that would hook you in i, I was kind of surprised about that i do want to shout out uh i, I like the alley stuff and then legendary that guy Chris Mulkey as the uh, as the molesting uh, oh, yeah. his foster parent. You know, if if you look up Chris Mulkey, you were like, I'm sure I was <laughs> the only one. It's like, oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, that guy. Uh, so let, but like also Loretta Lynn would be 
like so angry if she knew her song was used by a woman to cover up her husband molesting oh, someone. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah, like I said, that was that was interesting. Let's go ahead and talk about that first episode a little bit. So, the first episode is basically it's it's a table setting episode. We've talked about table setting episodes in the past, and this is this is very much one as well. Uh, we're learning about. I guess the girls who the show is going to be yeah. shadowing throughout the course of it. We don't like that. We don't get Tony Clud in this hardly at all, uh, except for a very, very we get her daughter. Yeah, we get her daughter here. Her daughter is Josh Cleary Lopez, who is played by. And we're going to butcher some names here. Uh, Ali Caravajo, we think is how you pronounce it. Uh, she's really good. Yeah, she is good. She she's very good in this. Uh, we get a little bit of a glimpse of her. Uh, we see how she's kind of dealing with this. She's got two younger siblings that, as well, and they obviously don't get along. Uh, so that's one of the issues that we meet up here at the beginning. But the, the one who kind of like steals the show at the beginning of this, at least in that first episode, that is Hallie Bush's character, Allie. Yeah. And she was she was really, really phenomenal in this. She really was. And th- again, this is her first acting job. It is scary how good she is uh, off the bat. And she's also just, her character is just probably, she is the one that keeps me the most interested. Just because she, she has that, uh, Adina Porter is doing that voice for her, that inner monologue thing. And like I said, it's not yeah. even, a, it's it's like somebody in her head. I don't know, I don't know where they're going with that. I honestly have no clue where they're going with that, but I'm very intrigued by whatever they're going to do with it. I am too. I, like her whole thing where like, you know, where she escapes the false parents to end up in the co- uh, convent. Right. You know, like it is the most interesting part. Uh, and Tony Collette, the, the Margot is the second, but like, yeah, that whole thing, every time she was on, I, I was really locked in w- with her. And like I said, and you know we've talked about this a lot like uh, a an actor that is not even speaking but they are so expressive with right. their face especially to be that young mm-hmm. and that, and to show that much presence and, and I, it was very impressive yeah she was really good in this in this first episode she's really good throughout the, the entire thing i would say the whole thing yeah, yeah she's really good throughout the, the whole thing but uh like i said I feel kind of like she's going to be a villain. I I, I kind of feel that way. I don't know. I mean, like that's going to be interesting. That would I would hate that because oh, I really like her. Well, but it's because the, that voice kind of like spurs her on to do things. I, I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so that's the reason that's why true. I'm kind of going. I'm thinking that. I mean, I don't know that for certain, but that's kind of what it feels like. Maybe there's not going to be. Maybe the villains are just going to be the people in this because I think one of the, the I think so. Josh Charles is obviously a villain. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. he is. I think what they're trying to set up with this is. Because I think what a big part of like there, it's like you said. There's a lot that they're trying to do in this. They're trying to just, like talk about the patriarchy. That is definite in this. Yeah, it's mo- modern day Handmaid's Tale. Yeah. So, and I have not seen Handmaid's Tale. Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've okay. seen the first two seasons, and uh, I know about the book. Okay, yeah. I, I haven't seen any of the Handmaid's Tale, but uh, but basically, like they're they're going to be attacking the patriarchy in this. That's one of the things they're kind of going to be commenting on it. They're commenting about just like what power can do to people. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, like I said, so it, that's one of the things I think that will be interesting to watch as this show goes on. Is will this? Will this power is this power going to corrupt people or is it going to bring out the best in people? That's going to be the one of the things yeah. that we have to kind of well, watch as we go forward. Bo- body autonomy is a big one, especially that's yeah. going on in, in you know in the war in our country for sure. Right. So, like I said, that'll be one of the things that we're going to be watching. And look, there's a lot of look the parallels about you know these are teenage girls who are getting this power and it's starting to come through. You know, just the idea of puberty and it making you do yeah. things. I mean, th- there's a lot of that type of stuff. So. Uh, I think they do a pretty good job of kind of balancing it and making it not just over, you know, heavy handed. Right. I didn't think it was preachy, which is shocking. Yeah, I know. I didn't think it was preachy either. Maybe that, but maybe that's where they need to get a little bit preachier just because it needs to, it needs to move a little bit more. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. maybe like I said, maybe that's, maybe they do need to get just a little bit preachier with it just so that you can kind of get really attached to these people. Cause I'm not just overly attached to any of the characters at this point. Well, I think Allie's the only one. Yeah, that's she is. Really, yeah. And I think she's the only one at this point that you're just kind of really attached to. Uh, but the rest of the characters that we meet, uh, let's see, where are the rest of the girls? So we talked about Roxy. Uh, Roxy. Okay, so Roxy is played by Rhea Zim- Zimitrowicz. I'm going to script these names, but yeah. she is the daughter of a 
she's the daughter of basically a mobsters. <laughs> the illegitimate daughter. Yeah, the illegitimate daughter of a mobster. Uh, and the mobster, like you said a second ago, just completely terrifying. Like when he like punches that cake, I I, I, like you just realize this is not a guy that you want to mess with him because nobody yeah. was like saying anything to him. They do a really good job of like showing just how terrifying this guy can actually be. Um, but she's got, you know, she's she's British, uh, or at least I've, I've, I'm thinking that she's from London. Uh, based yeah, on yeah, they, I think they mentioned she's London. She, I think they mentioned London at some point. Yeah, so I'll be interested to see how they get her with the rest of the, because that's kind of, kind of the case with some of these people, is how they're going to get so. them all mixed together. Uh, but she was interesting. I liked, I liked her character. Uh, well, then, she has an interesting story because, like, her dad obviously tried to get the mother killed right. for some reason. Right. And she happened to be there. And she happened to be there. And she wasn't supposed so, to be there because that was one of the things that yeah. they talk about. And this. So that, that's going to be a long. I think that's going to be a lot of her her storyline in the next few episodes. Yes, yeah, her dealing with her dad. I think so as well. Yeah. So uh, let's see. The other person, the other people that we got, uh, we've got. Uh, I'm trying to think. Is Christina? Christina was one of them, right? No, Colette. I'm thinking no. of Colette. No, it was. Uh, it was well. It was Joss, Ali, Roxy, Tatiana. Tatiana. Okay, there's uh, Tatiana. I want to talk about that. She she was more in the second episode. Let's, uh, let's yeah, talk. Yeah, she was. Let's yeah, talk about th- her. Those were the main one. Yeah, those were the main ones in the first episode. Yeah, Tatiana was the other one that we we're intro- introduced to. Yeah, Tatiana. She is the the gymnast, correct? If I'm right, that was the Russian. Yeah, I don't know where they're going with her, but I was really, I don't either. I was really fascinated by her because she, they, they flash back to like 1999. Uh, mm-hmm. She's trying to get ready for the Olympics, and like I said, I was really interested in this part of the story. Uh, yeah. Like I said, she's obviously they're they're portraying something in this interview. She's got on this fancy coat and all this type of stuff, but like when the interview's over, they take all the fancy jewelry off, and she goes back to her, her very much lower middle class type family and her mother who is just abusive to her yeah uh but she has achieved fame and fortune because she's basically the the, i guess the wife of the 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 dictator i guess that's what that's what it looks like yes yes, Uh, that's what it looks like so she's the wife of the dictator and she's got all this food and stuff and her mother is like starving and when she comes to visit her she's like are you not going to offer to share? Not only does she not share, she like gives it to her little dog. I mean, yes, like and then kicks the mom out. Yeah, like I said, I don't like. She's awful. I mean, she she comes across as completely awful, but she makes a good point. She says her mom says you're just terrible or something like that, and she says, "Well, I learned from the best." Because I mean, she learned this from I her know. mother. So. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that that was interesting. That was out of nowhere, and then like she wasn't in the episode three, so like. How do we get Tatiana with everyone else? I, right. That will be interesting to watch. Yeah, like I said, I'm not sure where they're going down with that. But uh, anyway, like I said, interesting stuff. So let's talk about episode. Let's talk about the end of episode two real quick and go into episode three. All right, so the, the end of episode two, and well, the, episode two. Let's just talk about it real quick. So that's when they finally introduced Tony Collette and John Leguizamo, and this is when I think the show really thrives. Is when these two are on screen, which makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're the I most mean, they're, experienced they're they're stars. Like, they're great actors, yeah. anyway. Yeah. And look, look, I honestly believe that John Leguizamo, if he had not been in Super Mario Brothers back in the early 90s, his career would be much different than it is today. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, he's had a good career. Excuse me. Don't get me wrong. He's had a good career, but I really feel like he's he's fun to watch i mean and you oh yeah he you, is. you forget yeah. about that when you i watch him in this show i'm like yeah he's good at this i like this yeah he, he's, he's really got, good he's got charisma he, he's mm-hmm. he's a little funny in this because this show's not very well, funny at yeah, all he, he's pretty funny because he does the rapping yeah, he does the rap that was funny yeah like i said when the, what little little bit of levity is coming to us in the show is, is coming right. through him so uh I do think it's a weird role for him to be playing this like really smart scientific doctor. I've never really thought of John Leguizamo yeah. in that type of role, but he's doing a pretty good job with it. He's doing he's doing a great job. He's he's just a treasure. Yeah, he is. He's he's just wonderful. Like I said, if if it hadn't been for the fact that he'd been in Super Mario Brothers, I think he'd probably be a bigger star than he actually is. So, yeah. uh, but Tony Collette is the mayor of Seattle. Her character's name is Margot Cleary Lopez. Uh, she is basically kind of she's the one who's kind of figuring all this stuff out ahead of everybody mm-hmm. else. She's the one who's kind of understanding that it's these teenage girls and that they're the ones that are going through this. She goes to her governor for help, and I can't find the guy who plays Josh the Charles. Thank you, Josh Charles. What a villain. 
And he is just awful in this. He is he just is. absolutely awful. I mean, like I said, all the men in this, except for John Leguizamo, they are yeah. all kind well, of being no. portrayed as, as villains for the most part. Tundi, Tahib Jamo. Oh, uh, you're right. He's yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah, he's not being portrayed as a villain, but most of them are. <laughs> oh, no, you're right. You're right. Uh, but she goes to to him for help, and he's just like, you know what? Calm down. Settle down. I mean, it, the, and he gives the line, uh, don't get your panties uh, in a bunch. And that was just like the awful. classic, like, okay, you're just an overreacting, hysterical woman. And, and like I said, that was kind of like, that was, if you didn't know that he was going to be a jerk in the show, that was the yeah. moment that you realized it. Absolutely. So. Uh, well, when, when he was playing poker with the, the big money people, that was the dead giveaway oh, to yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> True. You, you make a good point there. So, uh, like I said, it's just... Uh, she's the one who's kind of figuring this stuff out. She's kind of dealing with it. But her own daughter, though, the problem is she's also kind of completely wrapped up in her own world. She, she's kind of abandoned her daughter, and her daughter doesn't yeah. have want much to do with her. Uh, and that's kind of the issue that they're having here at the beginning. Uh, the second episode ends with, like, the ultimate sign of an apocalypse when a plane crashes out of the sky. Yes, I thought the same thing. I was like, it's Station Eleven. It's lost. It's, uh, was it's last, last of us. us. Yes, it was last yeah, of us. Yeah, it was the very first. Yeah, it was in the first episode, yeah. That's right. Yeah, so planes are falling out of the sky. So that's another thing that is a, a sure sign of an apocalypse is that, that planes Wait, are falling out. did X-Men have something like this, too? The first movie? I'm almost positive. I, you, I think you're right. I, I don't remember. It's been yeah. so long since I've seen that movie. I can't remember. But you're probably right. Uh, but so that kind of sets us up and for the the final episode where where Tony Collette's character and John Leguizamo's character they they finally discover about their own daughter she's got her she's got this power as well and they're trying to deal with that they're trying to understand it and they ultimately just learn here at the very end of this that it is a new organ that has grown and so this is kind of like an evolutionary process I said, I don't know what to think about that, but like she also like the girl yeah. on the plane like gave it to another adult. Like I said, yeah, it's yeah. kind you of could, you it's, could transfer it, yeah, which is weird. I don't understand this. It maybe is weird. and maybe they'll explain it more as we get into this and in, into more of this of this season. But as of right now, it's just kind of a it's a very hard thing to kind of understand, and I don't really quite grasp it. Yeah, all. you know, we we've never we love you, Amazon. Let me just state that uh, we do love you, but. We've never figured out their process. This feels like a bingeable show. It really does. Because when I was sitting there watching, it was like, this feels like a show you just kind of want to go ahead and watch in like two or three days. Right. Because, and they're they're going week to week after this. They're going week to week after the this. The odd thing is, Daisy Jones and the Six, which was a huge show for them, they dropped three and then two, 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 and it was done. But yeah before March or stuff. I don't understand their process. Yeah, we, we have never figured out as much as we have talked we've talked about a lot of Amazon shows and look, the Amazon yeah. shows have been good to our to our they have listeners. Been. That's why we love them. Yeah, so like I said, it's it's really odd that the way that I, I don't understand how they go about determining what's going to be a weekly show, what's going to be a, 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 a drop all at once, or what's going to be like Daisy Jones yeah. where it's three, two, two. I, I don't get that. Uh, this one is going to be drop three and then the next six will come because this is a nine episode show as well. Uh, but it, like I said, it's just kind of all over the place. And like I said, I think it's a good show. I really do. I really think it's, yeah. I think it's a good show. I think it's got a lot more going forward against it. But the problem is, and this is one of the things I was struggling with it, you know, I'm, uh, you know, like when I get home from work, because like uh, when I was watching episode two, I'm, I've been I've been at work all day. I've been dealing with teenage girls and boys uh, all day oh, long. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I sat in my chair because I had to watch this on our iPad because we got the screeners. I'm sitting there watching it on my iPad with my uh, earbuds in. I was struggling to stay awake because of the pace of it. And like yeah, I said, yeah. it wasn't because... Especially the first episode. I thought the third one moved much better. Yes, the third one moved A much better. A lot of that is... Tony Collette and John Luzamo and Josh Charles. Josh Charles going, at, yeah, they've yeah, gone head to head. Helped, but uh, yeah, I thought the first one was a struggle. In fact, I thought I was going to watch multiple episodes, and I watched the first one. Was like I started watching something else. Yeah, for me, I was so because I was so taken aback by just how different the show was than I was expecting. The first one was a much easier watch for me than I expected it to be. But that second one, like I said, I was yeah. struggling uh, because, like I said, I needed to move a little bit more because I'm tired when I get home. Uh, right, right. And I needed something. I needed to move a little bit. Now, like I said, that third episode, uh, 
it was pretty good. Uh, it was probably my favorite of the three because yeah, John Leguizamo, too. Tony Collette are really cooking in that. Maybe it's a sm- if you're going to do this week to week, maybe they really felt like they need to get to that third episode so that they yeah, could, so. could hook people in and maybe they'll start picking up from there. But like I said, this outside of the pacing, because like on the screeners when we're watching it, there is, uh, I'm assuming it's the same as it is on yours. Like when I like go full screen on it, the timer is always there. <laughs> like, yeah, like, and there's yeah. some, there's some episodes. It really felt like that timer was going really I, slowly. I, I thought the same thing. Yeah. But like I said, it's, it's really well acted. It's, yeah. it's very well made. It's got a very, it's got a, a kind of a graininess that to the, yeah, to the film well that, that helps, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, I think so too. But it's just it's just kind of slow at times. So yeah. uh, maybe it picks up here with episode four, episode five going on. But yeah. it's it's been a little bit slow. I think it can just because they really haven't shown the powers that much, and they have right. They haven't really delved into that. They just kind of at this point, it's just kind of been these girls have been having accidents for the most part. Yeah. And now well, at some point we got to think the girls are gonna really gain power over everything. So which it feels like what they're they're leading towards. So uh, yeah. maybe they'll get there, and that's where things start to pick up a little bit. So like I said, overall I think it's good. Uh, I think it's I think it's I think it's a solid show. I think it has potential to be much better than what we've gotten here in the first three episodes. Yeah. Uh, I've been well, paying attention to the reviews for it. The reviews have been pretty good. Rotten Tomatoes has been a little over sixty percent. Um, that sounds about right. The the IMDb ratings on this are weird because like every episode is like seven point one, seven point two, seven point six. But like if you look at the overall rating for the show, it's five point five. That is weird. I know. Like we I saw that with something else. Yeah, I think we did. I don't remember what it was. The peripheral, maybe. It may have been the peripheral. But like I said, the the individual episodes are rating pretty pretty well because anything above yeah. a seven on IMDb is pretty good. Mm-hmm. That's uh, really good. But when the overall like the show itself is only rating at five point five, I I don't yeah. understand how that works. To be perfectly honest with you, so. Uh, anyway, like I said, a lot of good, a lot of good performances, but I, I will be interested in what they do here with the fourth episode. So, yeah. Uh, do we want to talk about anything else before going to awards? I think we're good. I think we're, I think we're good too. So let's go ahead and go to our awards. All right, here on the Main Attraction Podcast, whenever we are covering a season of a show, we do like to do three awards. Up first is the is the Tyrion Lannister the MVP for the week? Who are you going with for the MVP for these first three episodes? I'm going Hallie Bush as uh, Ali. I thought, you know, especially her first uh, role, and you know, she really leads this. So I got to, I got to shout her out. I'm going to go ahead and go with Tony Collette. I just feel like. Yeah. Uh, I think Ali Bush was definitely the MVP of the first episode. I, don't, I think that's very yeah. much the case. But I think Tony Collette's the MVP of the second and the third. So <laughs> Tony Collette's the MVP of the show for sure. She wasn't in it. It would, it would be rough. It would be rough. Her and her and John Leguizamo helped make the show really, really, really watchable. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm gonna go, go with her for the Tyrion Lannister. The Agatha all along. The best scene of the week. I'm going the last scene where Tony Collette is all of a sudden becoming the leader of this. Yeah, that's what you're talking about where she's doing the press conference and explaining yes. everything. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going with that too. Because you'll notice one of the things I thought that was interesting about that scene is when she starts actually talking about the truth behind all this stuff, all the men leaders out there, they start, oh, okay, we'll yeah. go ahead and follow along as well. So mm-hmm. I thought that was interesting. Uh, the If You Come to the King, You Best Not Miss, Your Best Line. Either we did this to these girls or they developed out of necessity. Oh, I like that one. I didn't even think about that one. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, I had the one I had was uh, I can't remember. I had it written down, but I, lost, but I actually deleted it. It was there at the beginning uh, when the voice is talking to Dean Porter. She's mm-hmm. like, "Go ahead and speak" or something like that. I can't remember. Like the, yeah, pre- yeah, the very first it was time, like she, that. yeah, when she very talked to her the first time because that was I thought that was important just because she said, "Go ahead and speak when you're ready." That's what it was. Go ahead and speak when you're ready. And I thought that was important just because it really told me that this voice is going to be dictating a lot of what this girl does and who knows where what what that will yeah. lead to. And Mine was almost Eddie Marsad going, do you know who I am? I'm Bernie Monk. And I was like, <laughs> what a name. <laughs> That's a good one as well. So, uh, Yeah, it's, it's a good one as well. So, uh, Here on the Main Attraction Podcast, we do have a five-tier rating system. At the top of our list is Game of Thrones. Uh, beneath the Game of Thrones is Lost. Middle of the Road Force is Friends. Beneath the Friends is a full house. Bottom of the barrel for us is Baywatch. What are you going with after the first three episodes? 
I'm kind of between a friends and a loss. Yeah, I am too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I would say three point five sounds about right. Uh, it, it, it does. You know, I'm going. I'm going all. I'm going a loss. Just you know, anytime you can see Tony Collette lead something, it's, yeah. it's it's worth. And I think the premise is there. Yeah, the premise uh, is definitely there. I think. I don't think it's it's. It, I, I would be shocked if this Game of Thrones territory. I don't think it'll hit that, but I feel it's it's going to either be the friends or the loss at the end. I think. Yeah, I think that's going to be the case as well. I'm since you went with lost, I'll go ahead and go with friends because I think it kind of needs to be between the two. So yeah, I think so. That it kind of averages out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with friends. I like. I'm with you. I think it's got potential to be pretty good. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know that it's ever going to be like one of the greatest things I've ever seen, but it's been right. it's got the potential to be a pretty good show. And I, I, I got to say this, it, it may have more potential than Peripheral did. Oh, I think definitely. I think I think it has yeah. a lot more potential than the Peripheral yeah. did. Uh, I, the Peripheral, it was too heady. It was way mm-hmm. too heady, and they just yeah. they stumbled with that way too much. And right. they had some good, they had some good moments. This I think has a lot better acting going for it. I think that's one. Oh, of the, yeah, I think that's sure. one of the things that will help this show a lot more so than any other show. So uh, we'll definitely. Be, I'm definitely going to be checking out the fourth episode. Yeah, uh, I will. Yeah. And do we come back to cover this again? Just depends if you guys. You decide. Yeah, you decide if you if a whole bunch of people listen to this show uh, and they decide that they it will be back. It will be back, and we will be covering it again. If not, we're gonna we're gonna kind of we'll just kind of leave it here and maybe come back to it maybe at the end or something. Who knows? So, all right. Uh, do we want to do recommendations? Uh, looking forward to here. We want to save that for succession. Uh, let's save it for succession. Okay, I'm kind of with you on that as well. So, all right, guys. Uh, I guess that kind of wraps us up for our discussion of the power. Anything else you want to add before we head off? Appreciate everyone joining us, and we will talk to you next time. I would echo those same sentiments, and as always, until next time, may all of your entertainment dreams come true.